Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Paul's DIY. First of all I'd like to wish you all a happy new year and I hope you all had a great Christmas. It has been a while since I last uploaded a video and that is because over Christmas I became a father. My beautiful wife gave birth to her little daughter so I've been spending all my time with her. But yes, now I'm back and in this video I am going to be doing a custom makeover on the 12 inch armoured Batman figurine and I'm going to be giving him a paint job not a full paint job just highlighting the scratches I'm going to be removing the cape because the cape is the wrong colour and I'm also going to attempt to put some lights into the helmet take the helmet off and put some lights in there to light up his eyes and uh, yeah we'll go from there so let's begin okay so I've already gone ahead and removed the head of the 12 inch armoured Batman and here, here is the head here and then I've used a knife just to cut out the eyes and I did that using just a normal serrated knife and I cut out the eyes and then inside I've painted white and then what I'm using to light up the, the eyes is an AA battery powered LED strip or LED lights. Originally these lights, the lights had about 10 lights on them and I cut the, the excess off and I need the two. And they're going to go inside the head and light it up. I drilled, out, drilled a hole into his neck, put two LED lights which were attached to a wire leading to a double AA battery pack. I will be removing this horrible cape, which isn't even the right colour. For some reason they've stuck a black a black cape on. I'm going to replace it with this, which is more screen accurate. And what I'm going to be doing is not too bothered about the wires. But yeah, the wires will, I'll glue the wires down there and then it will thread underneath the cape from there onwards. I might see if I can drill a hole and thread it through there, I'm not too sure. But I've made a little cut out there. And then in the helmet itself, painted it inside white and then this is just normal filler that I've put around the base and I've basically done that because when you turn the lights on and place the helmet on, light was protruding and showing underneath his neck. So doing that and putting the filler on there just closes up the gap around the neck. As you can see, there is a rim where it sits when the filler has gone onto the neck. But now when I place the helmet on, all you see is the light shining through his eyes and not on his neck. Now the masking tape was just by accident. I turned the lights on and a bit of masking tape stuck to the LED lights before I had put them in the figure itself and it created the effect. There are other ways I've tried. I've tried some um, bubble wrap. Uh, I've put a, a large actual bubble, um, still inflated. I've placed that into the hat, into the hat, into the helmet and then place the LED lights behind it. It was, a, it was an alright effect, but I wasn't completely happy with it. Then I tried just um, getting some bubble wrap, popping one and using just a strip of the plastic, because uh, it's almost see-through, it's like frosted glass almost type effect. And I stuck that to the inside. It still gives a good effect, but like I say, by pure chance, a bit of masking tape on the insides and the eyes, and you get the glowing effect. So again, I'm going to give the uh, figure itself a little bit of touch-ups here and there. Um, overall, I'm absolutely happy with this figure. The way the uh, detail is absolutely fantastic. But uh, this custom makeover for this figure itself isn't so much about the figure. Obviously, I've done the lights, but I am going to be putting it side to, next to um, the bat um, signal on the rooftop that you see in the movie similar to 
that bounce signal there. So that's the effect I'm going to be going for. So this is a, just an image I found on Google. And I'm going to try and replicate the bat signal and have Batman standing side by side with it, looking up slightly as if uh, Superman's just arrived. So that's what I want to try and replicate with this, this, this figure. Okay, now we're going to make the cape for the armoured Batman. This is the grey material I showed you earlier. So I'm just going to remove his head. I really should have done the cape first with it before attaching all this because now I've got to work around the wires. But I'll make it work. Okay, that's the armored Batman cape now done. Cut to size. All I'll need to do is first give it a slight iron because it's got a crease going all the way across the middle and then glue it on. So on one hand, the cape has come out fantastic, it looks absolutely great, and that is the, the cape now finished, but on the other hand, I'm actually regretting gluing the wire, if I can get that in there, yeah, gluing the wire into the back of the cape, because now I'm left with that, and the wire behind, and the box is too wide to hide behind his leg, and Whereas if I just lay it right behind, and I could have hid the box behind the cape, so I'm gonna have to try and hide that somehow. Not sure how yet, but that's the cape done. Okay, guys. So to hide the backpack away, what I've done is I've super glued it to the to the back of the figure, and then the cape will come down over it. I've used super glue but I'm not 100% happy that as you can see it is moving even though there's, I put super glue underneath the bottom there. So I'm going to be hot gluing it as well and see how that comes out and then hopefully the cape will just drape over. I have took the cover off because the cover as you can see there is quite thick. So what I'm going to do is just either leave that as is or cover it up with some uh, black uh, insulation tape just to secure the batteries in. So let's get that glued in. So that's the backpack glued in place. As you can just probably tell there is a slight crease there where it is, but it's hardly noticeable. And all I've done to get it into place is use a bit of hot glue. Focus. There you go, hot glued it into place on his lower back and on his bum and then used a bit of masking tape to take the wires into place. Now the only problem I've had after I've been doing that is the figure is now top heavy <laughs> so it doesn't actually stand up so I might have to it will stand up on his own if I no, not going to stand up so what I'm going to have to do is 
create a base maybe and uh, stick him on a base. Create a base for him with some nails hammered into the base and then slot that on so that he can stand up on his own two feet. Here I'm just using a dark mix in a dark grey to paint the undersuit of the um, of the figure. The reason I'm doing that is one, it, the actual suit used in the film is darker. Plus, I'm going for the nighttime scene where he's on the roof waiting for Superman, so the suit is going to look darker anyway. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and used a fine paintbrush and I've painted uh, black acrylic paint into all the scratches and once that has dried I'm going to be dry brushing some silver paint over them just to make them pop. All I'm doing now is using some chrome, so some gold paint there and I'm just going to go in over the buckle and the pouches. Okay guys, that's the gold now done on the buckle and pouches and it's already looking a lot better. The Batman figure is almost complete. I'm not, not going to show you because I want to save that for the reveal. But what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to make a base for it. As you can see here, that is going to be like a rooftop base. And this bad boy here is a Good uh, plastic container that contained a lot of sweet and salted popcorn that I've eaten and now I feel very fat. But now that I've finally emptied it, I'm going to be making that into the bat signal. And I'm going to be placing that next to Batman in the armored suit. And it's going to be replicating uh, Batman on the rooftop waiting for Superman. So let's get on with the bat signal and the base. Okay, I've done a lot to the bat signal and a lot's happened, but I'm going to talk you through it. So, I've gone ahead and made the legs, and I did that with just some strips of wood that I have screwed together, sorry, bolted together, bolted through the plastic tub, as you can see, just bolted into there using a drill to make the holes. And then the legs go down into a wooden base that have been screwed in. Chiseled out an insert for it and then screwed it in. And I've done the same on the other side there. And these strips of wood here was uh, super glued onto the tub and then obviously bolted in. And then for all the little bits of design. First of all here I've used a USB hub, so that's the USB that connects in that should slot into the computer and that runs to the back there where the USB hub is obviously that will be painted and then here is what well, there's the remains of a set of old headphones that I'm basically taken apart. This is the microphone that I glued onto a block of wood and then it was backwards and forwards and that's obviously the switch to turn on the the light, the bat signal. So I've not obviously wired in these wires don't do anything. They are the metal I want to say magnets to right the two headphones themselves and that is the speaker out of the actual microphone. Uh, so this is just for 
detail. And the bottom here are just some old super glue lids. Just to add more detail, this is a box. And then I've bolted in some some bolts there again for details. Use I've uh, been going off reference photos. Um, it's not 100 percent obviously that accurate. This is just my own design. And then this is going to house house the battery pack that will light up the LED lights that will be going in here. But as you can see there, that is the headphone jack and the microphone jack. It just I've drilled the holes into there. Again, this is all just for detail. And the wires are just super glued into the bottom of the USB hub. And then a few loose wires, again, just for detail, they're just super glued on the back there. Super glued into there. And then on the top, that is the cap for my ready mixed filler tube. And then these, again, just blocks of wood on each corner. And that is pretty much it now finished for the base. I still have to do the front and put the back signal on and then give the whole thing a spray and then paint all the detail on. Apart from that it's finished. And that'll sit very nicely on the base next to the armoured Batman. Okay guys, so to get this video out as quick as possible, I have got, just gone ahead and uh, painted the inside of the tub white, so just so it reflects the lights better, and for the time being, whilst I'm waiting for the uh, battery powered LED lights to arrive, I've just bought some push LED lights, and just push them on my sock, like so. Been a bit of an issue. There you go. And then that's the bat symbol that I cut out. And there you go. So that's the figure now finished and the bat signal ready for the final reveal. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you how to make a very quick and simple kryptonite spear for your uh, armoured Batman figurine and um, what you're going to need for this is a wooden dowel and I measured the diameter of the hand on the figurine and this dowel fits perfectly to slide straight into his hand as if he's holding it like so. So you need a wooden dowel and this is just a cap of a <laughs> I am prone to getting cold sores in winter, so this is a cap off a um, Survirax and that is going to be stuck on the end, like so. And then this is, I got this off eBay, and these are used for people who want to get their ears pierced and then make the hole bigger, and apparently they use these to do that. Um, and you can get different size diameters to make it wider and wider, make the hole wider and wider. And I came across this on eBay, and obviously it's already green, and it's in the perfect shape for a kryptonite spear. So that is simply going to get glued into the end there, like so. And then we'll give that and that a paint job, and that is your quick and easy, simple kryptonite spear.